let's set up a basic logging for our application. Now we will use uh, logback, so we need to create um, logback spring dot XML file. Now here we will configure our uh, logback uh, logger. Uh, why I'm using uh, dash spring uh, to the naming of this file is because we want to read configurations uh, from our environment variables that are defined in uh, in this uh, YAML file. Mm, and since we're talking about it, let's create, uh, let's define uh, some stuff. First, we want to set levels, right? Uh, logging, mm, logging level. So we define which packages. So we will define a, a logging level for each for the packages. So for uh, Spring, for, for Spring beans that are defined in the in all these packages that starts with the naming of org.spring spring framework we will log all of those uh, in uh, info now our for our project though uh, how I want for now to set them on debug which means uh, our packages that are contained in uh, uh, com.odafa.cloud group let's write it com Cloud app, okay, mm, not that, obviously. So all packages that are gonna be in this base package, they will be on uh, debug level. Okay, let's cloud up. Yeah, it seems seems about right. Okay, so here. Now we will be able to read the um, variables that we define uh, in this in this file. Why do we need it? Because I want, for, uh, when we develop our application, I want us to be able to see logs in a console. But once application is deployed, obviously we want those files to be um, to be on the file. And uh, here we will uh, define it. So let's start with some simple, uh, simple configuration. It goes something like this, and uh, we will need to have uh, some base, uh, some base appender, right? So let's see what uh, what we have here. Now we define uh, our. Um, base level as info and uh, as appender we will use uh, asynchronous console uh, what uh, what it does is the following we will have a, a blocking queue so our logging will be asynchronous which means it will have uh, for for a log data uh, blocking queue uh, and uh, our application thread will will not be blocking when, whenever we add uh, data to this uh, queue. So uh, here we uh, configure our uh, asynchronous mm, appender. Uh, for now let's uh, let's don't don't mind this. We'll have some name. Uh, why why this is good? Imagine situation when uh, when it is important for your application thread to to run as fast as possible. You do not want uh, for application to pause for uh, some logging operations, uh, especially when those operations are input output related. For instance, uh, we will write logs into file. We might want to send them through network uh, in JSON format, and it will take time. For this specific application, it might not be very relevant, but if you have some uh, data-intense application, it will be very, very much so relevant when you have uh, thousands of requests per second. Uh, again, it's not very much relevant for this application, but I just wanted to show it uh, as, a, as, a, as a useful technique. 
Now here we have uh, uh, our uh, asynchronous console configuration. Uh, we define the queue size. Well, we can set some outrageous number here. Uh, we we said that it never blocks, which means that uh, application thread will, um, when it's set to false, that this means that whenever uh, mm, queue size exceeds, our application thread will block and will not add additional data to this queue. Uh, by this configuration, you can set a discarding threshold. By default, it's uh, twenty percent, uh, which means that that uh, whenever size when whenever size uh, of the queue well, the data in this queue exceeds 80 percent and there is less than 20 percent left our main application thread will start block uh, actually it will, it will not start block it will uh, it will not be adding uh, anything that is less than deep uh, than is less than worn or error so trace info will be discarded by setting it to zero it, sh it means that no um, no messages will be discarded again it's not important for this application it's uh, these settings are more for a data intense application but i will leave them here if you want to mod them you can you can actually remove those so okay now we have uh, configured it we need some uh, appenders because we're just um, we are configuring here the, the the overall mechanics. Now let's uh, let's set up uh, let's set up a console appender. Okay, so this one appender will be named console as you as you see this object that's used uh, the pattern of the log message, and let's set it up here, which means that. Uh, asynchronous console will use as a pender uh, our con console. So this is how it's linked. You see a reference and the name of it. So okay, if we start application now, all the logging will be will be on the console. Well, of course it's nothing new. We already have it, but let's uh, nonetheless test it out. We build it first. And we run the application. Okay, so we see logs in the console. And again, nothing nothing new. But it happens uh, through different uh, mechanism. It's not log for J, it's uh, it's log back. As you can see, uh, how the log is formatted as, uh, according to this uh, uh, pattern. Okay, so let's now create a file appender because uh, when we deploy our application, we want our logs to be uh, logged into the to the file. All right, so that would be the the appender, the name of the appender. We'll name it file. Uh, we have the name of the file convention. Now this is how our file will be named. Now uh, here what we have is uh, the rolling policy which means um, whenever we start file, uh, whenever we start logging it creates a file that is named like this. But Max history uh, indicates is how many um, how many uh, in this case months six months why why it means six months because in file pattern we we said it is like euro and month if we say it say here like this days this means that max history will be six days so uh, it will create files uh, every day but it's kind of too often for me I don't need it to create everyday file so it will create new file every month it will keep on the server files for uh, for a six consecutive months and it will create new file each month or if uh, total capacity of this file exceeds one gigabyte so if we create a file and, and in this month we create that data log data for more than one gigabyte it will roll over and create new new file okay 
and uh, here is the pattern I'm using the same pattern as in console so now uh, we want here to set file as a pender and if we rebuild application uh, and run it again we will not see anything logged into the console and we should see everything logged in, with, into the file file will be created in the same directory from which I'm starting the application in this case it's a cloud app it's a, a root directory okay so let's start and see how it works out okay so it started you see there is no logging and let's update the structure of the application minute open uh, source Uh, there you go, you see that this file appeared uh, exactly as we declare it to be the name of it cloud panel logs dot log. You see, there you go. So, what we have in it? Well, we have all the logging data. You see, it's beautiful, very well formatted. We have the name of the thread, we have process ID, it will be important in uh, Spring application, uh, in uh, Java, when we deploy it on Linux server, if, you want, if we want to kill this uh, process, well, we have now the number of it. Okay, so uh, that's all good, but uh, we don't want every time to, you know, to rebuild the application. So let's let's stop it for now okay we killed it uh, now what we want is not to every time uh, edit this file ideally we would want uh, we would like to have configuration here somewhere right so let's let's create configuration I'll explain it we will have app we will have uh, mm, what we will have here we will set up where we want to log it to right so logging to and here we will name uh, uh, the, the the appender name what we want to use it could be file or it could be console so let's set it for now to for console now what we need is to read this setting from this file now how we want to do this is, well, since we named it dash spring, which means we have access to the variables defined here. But uh, keep in mind, if you uh, try to access uh, environment variables, spring uh, boot environment variables that are not uh, set up here, for instance, you can set them through um, injection from uh, zookeeper injection, it's popular uh, methodology in uh, in uh, when you have many uh, many application running. So uh, if you define them somewhere else and uh, not in this application, it will not be able to read them because uh, whenever Spring Boot app starts, it first uh, parses this file, and those variables are gonna be set in the in the in a context and this file is parsed uh, later uh, at the at a later stage than this file which which means uh, if uh, this this why it is possible to read variables from this file from uh, from this file okay and if you define them uh, in some in some uh, other places or you rely on some uh, uh, injection after startup the problem is that it will parse this file then it will parse this file and after that it will inject uh, other variables and it will not be able to read them if you if you try to reference variable in this file from uh, something else except this file so we define this variable here logging to now here we need to access it right so the way to the way uh, to access it is uh, we need to add the setting <coughs> and here uh, you see uh, appender name that we call it appender name and the source is uh, app logging to it's exactly what is named here you see app logging to 
the value here is console which means that uh, this variable we create a spring property you see we create with with the name uh, appender name and the value will be sourced from here which will which is console now here we will need to set this variable and the way to access it will be uh, like this and we type the, the name tender name mm, all right looks looks about right now you see whenever what whatever we set here in our configuration file it will use it here it's very very useful very convenient we do not want to edit many a lot of files ideally we want only one configuration file okay so let's uh, let's build it again and see uh, how it works out remember this time we set up and we want it to be into the in the console Okay, so we we'll run it, and we should see logs logged into the console. Okay, there we go. It uh, it accepted it. And let's go ahead and uh, add some simple log for tests. Yes, uh, okay. Uh, and here we will debug something that uh, index page opened for instance right maybe we will edit it out later but for for now let's leave it as it is uh so we've set it to be in a file and let's let's see how it goes in this file we should be able to see mm, we should be able to see this uh, this lock now it started nothing in the console we will uh, reload this file where it is mm. okay and now we go to our uh, to our start page or oh, is online okay and there we go index opened you see it, it did debug it uh, it sh shows the name of the thread that uh, executed it and uh, that's it now uh, one more time you see what happens here <clears throat> we have one thread application thread and we have a, a thread that is uh, that is lo logging in why why we're doing it it's because uh, application thread creates logging data here and by doing this we are adding this uh, data into the queue and application thread exits that's it. It, it application thread doesn't care about logging at all and from now on we have uh, another thread that reads those data from this queue the way we defined it here this appender uh, and uh, it performs all the logging in this case it opens the file it writes to the file and then it will close the file or we may uh, add additional operations that will send through the network and we do not want our main application thread that ex executes application to block on this operation because if it's long operation and you have thousands of requests on this um, controller this operation will start will start to be uh, very uh, long and your uh, your application speed will decrease and for maximum throughput we, we that's why we configure this asynchronous logging okay great